Here we are at the beautiful Baywood Center Corporate Park, and we're interviewing my fellow Rotarian and friend, Stephen DeSorbo, president of Coordinated Benefits Group. Good morning, Steve. Good morning. How are you doing this morning? Doing good. How about you? I'm great. Thank you. I know I've gotten you early, but you're already busy. Can you tell me a little bit about what Coordinated Benefits Group does and what its mission is? Coordinated Benefits Group is a benefit broker consulting company. Uh, we broker multiple insurance benefits for corporations for their health and welfare plans. And we consult by bringing human resource consulting, uh, technology solutions to the table to help them beyond what the price is. So you are competing with what kinds of companies? Are there other uh, brokers? You're not competing with the giant insurance companies. You're competing with the brokers who We're, represent the giant insurance companies. Correct. We represent the giant insurance companies to the corporate clients that we have on the books. And do you, do you also work with uh, sole proprietors or, or families? Uh, we have somebody that handles individual insurance also, but our primary focus, 95%, uh, is corporate. Very interesting. And how did you how did you get started? I actually started off on the individual side and in, back in 1979 and I did not like the the uh, PM work so I started knocking on doors for corporations. Uh, in about 1980, 81 I uh, started writing uh, group health insurance. Um, built up a company that uh, we sold in 1999 and started coordinated benefits group uh, and did it all over again in 2000. Well, we have a, a range of ages watching this video, including a lot of our younger Rotarians who are in the Rotaract Club still trying to get their feet wet in their careers. Mm -hmm. So how did you learn the insurance business? How, how did, who was the pivotal person or what was one of the pivotal moments in your career, uh, let's say either pre-college, during college or after college, that directed your mind towards this kind of career? Well, I, my father was actually an insurance man for uh, John Hancock. He was a company guy. Um, I did not like uh, being a company person, too independent. Uh, there was no pre-current and post-college because I'm the college dropout guy. Interesting. Uh, and so I went total entrepreneurial. And you went Bill Gates. I, yeah, I kind of went, went, went Bill Gates' direction. Uh, and. Uh, started working for myself and I don't I, you know I don't think I can work for somebody else that hands me a book and says this is how we do things um, my only claim to success are the multiple employees that I have uh, that I people that I can turn to to ask the questions of I'd rather hire somebody with a master's degree than have to go get it myself fantastic and how many people work for you now I have 10 amazing and these people have worked with you since you started yeah, we have great longevity with our employees. Uh, we have a great work environment. We don't micromanage. We hire the right people um, with the right culture, and we train the knowledge of the industry. We can train the knowledge of the industry, but you can't train the culture. Hmm. Interesting. Well, you have a beautiful office here, a magnificent setting. Well, thank you. What is the um, reason that you decided to join Rotary with all of this success why rotary well it's the success is is something that we strive for every day um, i rotary is my way of giving back uh, locally and internationally to to help wherever we can uh, it is my volunteer time my financial commitment uh, that type of thing is why i joined rotary didn't join rotary uh, to go prospecting and get new business. I joined Rotary and the downtown Rotary because of its reputation. So it's, it's my give back to the community. Very nice. Tell us a little bit about your personal life. Uh, I'm married to my lovely wife, Monica. Um, not my first marriage. I have four adult children. Uh, my oldest son, David, is 38. Uh, I have a, he works for AT&T. have a 36-year-old son who is actually the assistant chef at Taverna. Uh, you need to check that out if you haven't. Uh, a little free press for him. Uh, my 35-year-old my daughter is in the restaurant business up in Asheville, North Carolina, and my 28-year-old son works for Fidelity Investments and uh, about to move out to San Diego to uh, further his career. I have two beautiful grandchildren, uh, and, and at this point in my life, life is great. 
That's fantastic. What other volunteer endeavors are you involved in that you want to share with your listeners? Well, I work with uh, the Southside businessmen in the same respect. Um, I, uh, on the board, uh, an officer on the board for the last five years. Uh, it's definitely a give back also to the community. It's more of a civic organization. I'm very involved in my church at 1122. Uh, I do a lot of volunteer work there. Uh, we're there from 10 o'clock to 3.30 every Sunday, uh, and it's a, it's a beautiful thing to do to give back. I think we've come to a point in our lives where give back is absolutely what we should be doing, be it financially or time. Why is that? Uh, you know, I think that God blesses us in, in a way to not hoard and keep our, our time to ourselves or our finances. I think it's something that we should all be giving back to our community. Uh, to, to our fellows, whether it be through Rotary, through other organizations, or independently, um, those persons that need food and shelter. Do you think that the give back comes at a time in our lives where we're more senior in our careers, or do you think it should start when we're equally um, starting out with very little, let's say? I think it should start out early. It's not anything that I was taught, trained, or given. Um, and it doesn't have to be financially. I think we've come to a point in our career to where financially we can give and we should. Um, but time is something we can all give. I encourage that with my employees. They do volunteer work for different charities and nonprofit organizations that we manage the benefits for. Uh, and it's something that I think if we teach somebody early on, it's something that continues in their spirit going forward. And then when they get to the point where they can do it financially also, it's a natural transition. Great. Steve, thank you so much. I guess in closing, I want to ask you if you have any advice that you would want to give to the Rotaract members listening, the younger uh, side of the Rotary universe, to encourage them that with or without a college degree, they can achieve the kind of success that you have achieved here. Is there anything that you would want to recommend or suggest in recalling some of the nice things that have happened to you along the way? I would say treat everybody that's around you the way you want to be treated. As, as uh, canned as that sounds, um, I treat my employees with great respect uh, and, and that comes back to me a hundredfold uh, and don't give up. My father told me a long time ago, don't make a decision when you're in the valley, make it when you're on the mountaintops. So always strive for that mountaintop. Beautiful. Well, the Rotary Club of Jacksonville is indeed lucky to have Steve DeSorbo among our members, and I thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you. I'm honored to be uh, on the other side of this video. <laughs>